Today, folks, like every other day, I've got a real kick-ass treat for you today. Jason Phillips in the house. What's going on, man? Folks, Jason Phillips is the CEO, founder of Nutritional Coach Institute. Yeah, Nutritional Coaching Institute. Coaching Institute and Business Coaching Institute. Yes, sir. So Nutritional Coach, Coach of the Coaches. He's uh, spent a long time in the fitness industry. We were just talking right before we started this podcast, which I'm going to go back to. He's a former cover model, professional athlete to a sought after fitness and nutrition coach. Basically, let's go back to what you were saying before the podcast. Yeah, started. let's start there. You said you had anorexia. Yes, sir. That's where it all started. That's where it started. How old were you? 18. And anorexia to the point where you'd look in the mirror and see fat. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see fat, but I would see fat covering my abs. And so I was Word never was lean there? enough. Um, you know, looking back now, knowing what I know today, I, I certainly wasn't like bodybuilding ripped. Uh, yeah, but I thought anorexia is when you see yourself fat when you're really not. So anorexia, you see yourself fatter than you desire to be. See, I got the opposite. <laughs> What's what the, you got? I look in the mirror and go, dang, that's pretty good. Even though it's not necessarily <laughs> it's great, that, man. Yeah, it's not necessarily that I, good. Now, that was before because, again, I weighed. You've been I'll doing all you, the working out lately. Yeah, I'll show you a picture before and after. But I'm talking about before when I was really chunky. Uh -huh. I'd look in the mirror and be like, you know, maybe it's the mirror. I don't know, but I look fine. You know, and that and now that I'm getting in shape, it's like, damn, dude, how fat was I? <laughs> but when I looked in the mirror, I, it was the opposite of anorexia. Yeah. Like I thought that looks pretty damn good. And it probably did. I mean, the, the reality is it did me. not. And it, <laughs> it still doesn't. I mean, it looks way better. But dude, like right here on the hip. Sure. That shit won't come off. And dude, I'm I'm doing 45 minutes of cardio in the morning. Yeah. Fasted. Weights at night. And then 45 more. Oof. I'm wow. at 15 incline uh -huh. for 45 minutes at 4.1 miles per hour. Like that's a fucking. What are you eating? I'm eating flawlessly. Like for you example. Are you a chef or are you, you doing it all? You're on well, your my wife's the chef. Okay. But, and sometimes I'll buy it from Protein House. Got it. But I mean, it's all macros yeah, basically. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just eating, you know, 40 grams of protein okay. every meal with as few. Five meals a day? Four six. meals? Six meals. Okay. Every three hours. Okay. And, uh, you know, gallon of water. Okay. And that's it. What, what are you doing with the protein? Carbs, fats, doesn't matter. Well, again, I mean, it, supposedly it does, but like, for example, six ounces of, of 99.9% .9 lean turkey. Yep. Half cup jasmine rice. Okay. Sometimes no jasmine rice. Yep. Um, five ounces of greens. What kind of greens? Any kind I want. Yeah. Cucumbers, asparagus. Yeah. But it's always cucumbers. Because I don't really like vegetables. I like asparagus, but I don't really like any other asparagus vegetables. Asparagus is tolerable. The rest of them I don't like. I don't, so I don't do broccoli. For me, bro, it's cucumbers. Okay. So, And then sometimes I don't eat the cucumbers. So basically, I'm supposed to be eating the jasmine rice and yep. the cucumbers, but I just hit the protein and be done. So as much as you're training, 90 minutes cardio plus training, I would probably tell you you're not eating enough, like enough carbs. Enough carbs. Enough carbs. Damn. Yeah. Now see... That's the, that's the thing, Mike, most people wouldn't know unless they had the education you guys have. That's ironically for, you know, when I said I wasn't like bodybuilder ripped or fitness model ripped when I was trying to get there in anorexia, it was because I wasn't eating enough. No matter what I did. And I was doing the same thing you were. I was doing two hours of cardio a day. I was but training I'm trying to get the fat off. So I thought in my mind, well, yeah. just fewer calories in, it's gotta be better. Not to get sciencey on you, but like the minute you start dieting, your body's super smart. And your body's basically like, I'm going to protect myself, right? We were put on this earth not to just be to handsome as Brad Lee, but That's to, right. you know, to survive, thrive, and procreate. That's it. That's right. Yeah, right? There we go. First bomb of the day. Uh, you know, we're put on the earth to survive. And so the minute we go into a calorie deficit, the minute we start under eating, our body starts creating compensations. And, and like, so it like fat storage slows down metabolism, slow, is, is slow really down. I want to save it. this energy. Yep. Decrease hormone output, slows down the metabolism, basically wants to conserve because it's, it's got to insulate its organs. It has to be able to, that's survive. why we, that's why we molt like six meals a day. And that's largely bullshit. Like, so, it, so that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That's been disproven a lot of times, but man, I'm on the clock. Man. It's, I, got, some, it, it's easier. Like, if, like if this goes into my third hour, I'll see my assistant eat. out there with food. <laughs> Cause no, I, I it tell them, it doesn't have to be that hard. every three hours. Yeah. I don't want to be depleted. Yeah. No, I, chances are you're not eating enough carbs. I mean, I'll, I'll take a look at it after the show. I'll let you know. 
I'll show, well, again, I mean, it's hard to tell because I can show you the, the plan. Yep. I don't always follow it. I'll look at the plan and then I'll look what you do and I'll let you, I'll give you honest feedback. All right. I got a, I got a couple of big name athletes that we just started working with. Same deal, right? They've got nutritionist chefs and, uh, they don't always follow it either. So that's actually the real magic of, I think of a coach, right? I mean, you and I could sit here and pick apart and say on the business side, here's the growth plan of the, the next 10 amazing companies. How many people are actually going to go do the work? Like how many people are going to eat shit for 10 years? How many people are going to not spend all the money they make? How many are going to, yeah, I was on the way here today in the cab. I'm watching your video to the realtors. How many of you are going to knock on 10,000 doors? Maybe one. And so was it the plan that yeah, was broken all or of was them it the people win. that were broken? Yeah, the ones that want to win, sure. So the people that want to win are going to follow the diet. The people that that's don't. The, that's how easy it is. That's it? <laughs> that's how, it. Like a buddy that is. I always tell people. Matter of fact, I'm doing a keynote Friday, I think, 21st, in front of a couple thousand HVAC people. I'm starting it all off with, with you know, shit. That, guys, this isn't rocket science. Yeah. I mean, because it's called uh, Rocket uh, service rocket is okay. the, is the event. So I'm like, this ain't rocket science. <laughs> Cause dude, like you just said, who's, who, who's going to do this? And the answer is very few. Yeah. When in reality, my answer was anyone and everyone who wants to actually win Yeah. because that is how you win. And then people don't do it. Why do you think that is? <sighs> I mean, in today's society, entitlement is definitely running rampant. But are they, do, you, do you really think they're entitled? I think, I mean, in, in my space, yeah, there's some. No, I mean, uh, like you see people entitled to me is like, I deserve that even though they didn't do any work. So like I'm entitled, you owe me. Like I, I think to me, that has nothing is, to do with getting in shape. I think, okay, so getting in shape, it's just people are fucking lazy and they don't want it as bad. So I always say the, the speed of action is dictated by the severity of pain. And so the reason people don't change, they don't hate where they're at that much. But have you ever tried to figure out why, why they won't when they want to like consciously, like I want to be rich. Yep. And then you say, okay, start doing this right here. And, and people don't, they, why don't they? It's, it's a, it's a basically a function of necessity versus desire. And I think that people, people quote unquote need money, but did you pay your bills? Yeah. Did, can you get groceries? Yeah. Are you, are you sleeping in a home? with power. Yeah. You got TV, you got a cell phone. Well, you don't need money. And so all of a sudden you desire money. You want to live the Bradley life. You want to live the rich life, but you don't want to do the work. And so you don't need the money. So but, complacency sets in and you don't do it. Okay. So how come people can't put those two things together? That's a great question. I wish I had a good answer for you. I, I mean, cause that's you know, how for, simple it is. People are paying for coaching, especially, in, you know, yeah. you, you get paid for coaching. Absolutely. And the answer nine times out of 10 is do the work. Yeah. That's it. Well, my favorite thing is, uh, you know, I'll give you two things on that. First is the first nine years of my coaching career. I, for a large part, fucked around. I took on a few clients, you know, I'd get to seven, eight. Who, who are you coaching? Uh, anybody for Any, what, uh, for like weight loss performance, very little like longevity. So, so type people stuff. wanting to get in better physical condition to get would hire shape. you. Yep. I was sponsored by bodybuilding.com. And so cause I was, you were, cause you were so ripped or something. Uh, yeah, I was something like that. Were you like the on day. the cover of men's health with the six pack and all that? <laughs> I never made it to the cover of men's health. I did get on a couple covers, but not that one. I wrote for men's fitness, uh, was in muscle and fitness, max fit reps, a couple other big ones. So this is why people said, Hey dude, how do, can you even get me in shape? A hundred percent. Cause I always say nobody wants a fat trainer. Nobody does. And by the way, just for the record, just because you're fat, by the way, doesn't mean you don't know this, the right shit It's you're not doing the right work. And I keep telling people, you know, nobody wants a fat trainer. And then they're like, well, that doesn't mean they don't know. Well, I know, but like, I want a trainer that's doing the work themselves because the key is doing the work. When I was up and coming, there was a strength coach at the University of Texas. I mean, dude must have been four bills. And I always remember looking at him like, how the fuck does that guy know anything? And I mean, I was real young, real naive to the industry. And everybody was like, he is the gold standard in the industry. And I remember thinking to myself, well, so I just got to get fat. I'm like, this is never going to work for a former anorexic kid. I mean, I'm 38 years old. I still got body image issues. Like really? I never, oh, hell yeah. It never went away. Dude, Why? Man, I, I mean, I could, it's funny, we were sitting at dinner last night and we were 
somebody asked me, you know, what do you do for a diet now? And I, it's very intuitive. I've done it for 20 years. I, I can control pretty much anything. I could tell you how every food affects my body. Mm. Like to the point where if you and I went and we went to dinner tonight and we had Cheesecake Factory, I could tell you that if I eat cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory, I'm going to look worse than any other dessert on the face of this earth. But if we go and I eat cookies or I eat chocolate cake, I'm going to be fine for the next two days. And I've picked myself apart for 20 years. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, anorexia <coughs> clinically is anorexia nervosa. So I've always said, and I've, I've never sat down with psychologists, but I've always said, I believe it's a nervous system disorder. And so just because you overcome the eating portion of it, I don't think that you overcome the psychological portion of it. I don't think you rewire your central nervous system to how you see yourself or how you see it. I think you just ultimately learn to channel it a little bit better. Or use it to your advantage. Right. And I mean, I've told the story from stage a million times when I was up and coming. I, to this day, I don't, I don't coach a lot of people, a lot of pro athletes I work with still, but a lot of gen pop I don't work with. And I still get people reaching out to me every day on Instagram. Hey man, I heard your story on, on this podcast, right? I saw your story here. Can you help me? And I mean, I'm not a fucking registered dietitian, so I've clinically, I'm not work. even allowed to help you, but you did the work. I did the work. And so I've been through it and I could tell you what went through my mind at those times and hopefully offer some sort of peace of mind in that situation. Uh, I don't think any, anyone in the nutrition industry or in the fitness industry has really figured that out yet. I think a lot of people like to talk like they have cause it's a sexy marketing hook, but well, I don't think anyone's really nailed it. Well, again, I mean, you know, if you ask me, you look at someone ripped and you go, I want to look like that. Then you say, hey, what are you doing every day? What are you eating? What what are you taking? Like everything. And usually they'll tell you, you everything. Being honest? No. <laughs> exactly. Most of those dudes that are ripped, you know, full well, they're on fucking steroids, but Absolutely. they won't admit it. And it's yep. like, I don't know why you wouldn't admit it. Like yeah. who gives a shit? Exactly. So I said, Brad, do you ever do Botox? Yeah, I've done Botox, motherfucker. So what? Yeah. Like, what does it matter? Yeah. It, dude. Not that I'm taking steroids, clearly, but if I were trying to be a bodybuilder and everyone was taking steroids, I'd have to take steroids. Absolutely. Now, personally, I think if someone's out there out of shape, trying to get in shape, what I would recommend before even thinking about steroids would be get in sh the best shape you can be in yourself yep. so you see what it looks like and then the steroids after. Yeah. And I wouldn't even recommend steroids. I would recommend like test replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. A lot of, a lot of the top HGH coaches maybe. on that side are of that same opinion, but a lot of the young kids that are getting into it now, it's so readily available. It's, it's more readily available today than it's ever been. And you know, the HRT clinics have made it very gray area to get it medically and get a prescription for it. Yeah. And so a lot of the kids, they want the shortcut is it's hard. I mean, it took well, I don't me, know. Cause like I just went and got on TRT. <laughs> TRT is great. Yeah, I mean, so I, when I started working out, I, was, I, I had the benefit of it, but all it's doing is sticking me right around 900. So I was at 120 when I was 19 years old Jeez. and my free test was like a 10. And so, I mean, I've been on, I, I went on the cream right away. And this is, I mean, this work. is back in 2002. They don't work. Do they? It worked a little bit. And I mean, at that point I went from probably eating 600 calories a day to 4,000 calories a day. So with more food and a little bit of cream, it worked. I went to college. The doctor's like, Oh, you're, you just want to be on steroids pulling you off of that. I tanked again, went back down to a hundred and then they put me on TRT ever since. And same as you, they, they keep me at seven, 800, which is fine. Like I, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to be I'm healthy a, there. I, anything yeah. less than that. I don't think I would be a good, I wouldn't be a good boss. I wouldn't be a good dad. I wouldn't be a good. Why, why, do you, why do you say that? What do you think that's doing for you? I mean, there's a lot of things that are associated with low hormone output. I mean, your sleep's affected, your mood's affected, your strength is affected. And, you know, anytime we get mood instability, anytime that our sleep is affected, we start to see there's a whole cascade of effects. And I then mean, eventually your confidence is affected. That's it. I mean, you're going to be softer, right? You're going to be a little fatter. You're not going to be able to perform at a high level like you want to. And it all comes back to the whole validity thing that we were kind of talking about before this. I think that, you know, if I, if someone said, why were you anorexic for me, it was validation. Cause usually girls anorexic yeah. that I can remember. You'd be surprised. So a lot of, if we looked around, the I, fitness I, industry, I, I didn't meet a lot of guys with anorexia. I've, I've seen a lot of girls with it. You haven't heard a lot of guys talk about it. So if we went in the fitness industry today and we pulled the top 100 guys, I'd be willing to bet you 65% have some sort of disordered body image or eating history. Wow. Yeah. And it's because, and that's why they ultimately get into it. They need the validation now of, well, I didn't like myself. So let me either take steroids or let me maximize my, you know, my physique naturally. Let me get on stage. So a group of people I don't fucking know can tell me how great I look. 
And then let me put it on social media so the whole world can tell me how great I look. See, I want to do that except for the get on stage part. <laughs> you just want the world to tell you how good you look. No, they already are. <laughs> there you go. I want I, What I want to do is I want to look in the mirror and like what I see. Yeah. More importantly than that, I want to know that I put in the work mentally. Yeah. Because that mental certainty, even though, again, like, well, Brad, you still got, it doesn't matter. Every day I'm doing the work and that reinforces a level of confidence every single day. And and then pretty soon you start getting tighter and tighter. Next thing you know, your clothes do look better on you. Yeah. Next thing you know, you, you, you size down. Now you're like, holy shit, dude, you're starting to get in shape. And that's the point I'm in now. And now I want to get shredded for one reason. I want to do a frame up restoration. I need to be single digit body fat. Yeah. These have to be gone. And as soon as they're gone, cool. Now I want to be on what's what I call a lifestyle. Now the lifestyle. So what happens when you get there? You're going to keep it there? No. You'll, you'll come back to a little closer to where you're at now. A little less than I'm at now because I don't want Split this. I don't want this back. Got it. But, but what I want to do is create what I call a lifestyle. And then it is what it is. Yep. Meaning, I, meaning, hey, dude, I'm 53. I'm married. I don't care. Right. Okay. So, so I want to do it for health reasons, discipline reasons, mental reasons. Yep. Um, I can't, I can't necessarily give advice to young dudes and you know, the, the, Hey, you need discipline. And then I don't, per, you know, show any, I can't do that. Like, I think that's hypocritical. But you so just, I can't, I can't say, dude, you guys need to get up in the morning and go to the fucking gym unless I'm getting up in the morning and going to the gym. Because I've always said it, even though I wasn't doing it, dude. And it, and it, and it made a little crack in my confidence. It's like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm being hypocritical here. Well, you know, Andy, for Andy who? Yeah. For I mean, yeah, that's ultimately what founded 75 hard is he yeah. said, you know, he's like, I run one of the biggest supplement companies in the world. And I woke up one day and I was fat and I realized I need to be better. But all the reasons you just said you want to get in shape, that's why you're being successful. Like literally verbatim. That's why you're successful. 90% of people come into this because they want to look good for someone else. And so if I go back to Jason at 18, I wanted women to look at me differently. I wanted dudes to respect me more. And honestly, what triggered the whole fucking thing was Abercrombie and Fitch asked me to model. And they said, like, hey, make sure you send us pictures of your abs. Dude, I was a golfer. Like, I ate cheeseburgers and fucking milkshakes every day after school. And all I cared about was going pro playing golf. It was my whole life. And so I went on this wild pursuit to get abs to... If I got the cover of Abercrombie, dude, I mean, at 18 years old, everybody was going to want to be with me. And so that was my whole purpose. Now, back then I had it. But, you know, today, if you told me I have to change physically, like I've done the 20 years of day in, day out, go to the gym. I've done the perfect diet. And I'm actually trying to find what, you know, what you said you're going to get to, which is that maintenance, that balance. Lifestyle. I call it lifestyle. It's lifestyle. You know, for me now, I, I've spent the last probably decade at, in the one nineties, like six to 8% body fat, like a physique that I think a lot of people would want. Now I'm getting real serious about trying to play golf again at a high level. So I got to get smaller because you don't see super jack guys on the PJ tour. Now, why is that? Uh, you can't move like you need to mobility. Uh, I don't know about all that. I mean, I'll let you watch me swing a golf club. It ain't, it's not nearly as pretty as Tiger Woods. Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, if, if the ball goes straight, the ball goes far, I don't care what you look like. Look at John Daly. He's no fucking spring chicken. No, but that dude can move. But the, the, but it's my point. Like, yeah. But, but hey, hey, get skinny if you want. So I'm, but I'm struggling with getting skinny. Struggling in like mentally. achieving it? No, mentally. You don't want to do it. I, I mean, dude, I look in the mirror. You know, you spend 18 years trying to look a certain way. Yeah. And all of a sudden you look, you start looking in the mirror and you're going backwards from what you've been doing. That's tough. It's a mental fuck. Well, sure it is. And, and why? So you're, so you can play golf. Like I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't now, sacrifice my physical appearance for, for sport. So I want to get paid to play golf. I want to play professionally. And so one of the kids that we sponsor on the live tour, uh, he had a good statement to me the other day. He said, six packs don't win golf tournaments. And he's not so, wrong. I know. But so what is he saying? Someone with a six pack. So can't? Him, he needs to, he needs to get a little, he's a real skinny kid. He needs to get a little more size. And so he's talking about putting his size on by going to Chick-fil-A. And I was like, I think there's a little better way to put on size. He said, I, I just need size and power so I can hit it further. See, and you, and you want less. In my head, I'm like, well, I don't want you to be fat. And, you know, he don't, he don't care. He don't have the body image issues that I had. Yeah. And so he's like, well, well body of, fat's fine as long as I'm winning, you know, on the lip tour, they're winning $4 million a week. Dude, there's a lot of people with, with body challenges, yeah? I would argue, I don't want to put a number on it, but... 
40% of the world. What would you say to those people listening right now? If someone's going like, dude, this guy's pegging me. <laughs> You're not alone. Uh, a lot of, I but think a lot you, of people how have would shame. They fix it. <sighs> so for me, my journey to fixing it was completely different. Like I, somebody gave me horrible advice that I followed, but it sparked the recovery. I would never tell anyone. I mean, literally I was an anorexic kid. A woman said you should eat 4,000 calories today. Now, anorexic, I picture scrawny. Oh, yeah. 118 pounds, dude. Wow. Well, how I mean, tall? you see me, I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so, buck 18. So scrawny. Oh, yeah. There's women that are listening to this right now that are 5'9", that are like, I fucking weigh more than you did. Oh, yeah. Like, I was real skinny. And, uh, you know, she told me to eat a lot. I think for for the people that are struggling, it's like, why why do you feel the need to look a certain way? I think that's what you got to figure out first. Well, I mean, you should want to feel a certain way. Sure. She want to look, feel a certain way, but like if I looked in the mirror and felt 100% complete, yep. I wouldn't be working out, but I don't, I'm like, dude, I could be better. Yep. And what do I mean by better? Well, that's just society. No, that's me. I don't give a fuck what society but thinks. That's the difference. You said it's for you. That's right. Because what do I think looks good? Like, again, I don't think big ass bodybuilders look no. good. I don't want to be Jay Cutler. No. Again, I admire Absolutely. someone that can do that. And it's Jay like, wants holy to be shit, look at the size of that <laughs> arm. But if someone said, Brad, I can turn you into that tomorrow. Yep. My answer would be, do not do that. No. I do not want to be bulky. I just want to be like Mark Wahlberg lane. But regardless of the outcome, you're doing it for the pursuit to strengthen your mind, your body. That's right. You're doing it for future things in your life, family, right. business, all the things that are going to benefit you long term. Ultimately, dude, I've discovered that I'm worth it. That's it. But most people are not doing it to find out that they're worth it. Well, that's the problem I was going to earlier when I said, when I was trying to drive it, what do you think their problem is? In my mind, that's their problem. They don't think, well, they people think don't that, think they're worth it. When they go to the gym and they quit, it's their like they their mind says, oh, this is hard, this is bullshit. I don't like this. I don't want to do this. But that's not. That's their mind yeah. convincing them because they're finally doing the right thing. So that's their mind saying, wait a minute, if this motherfucker keeps doing this, he's gonna get in shape and shit's gonna go well and shit can't go well for this piece of shit lying bastard. That's it. So it says everything it needs to say to get you to stop doing what's good for you. It's it's because you loops. because you don't think deep down subconsciously people aren't aware of this. This is subconscious below awareness. Yep. You don't think you're worth it. Why? Because you've lied and you've cheated and you've procrastinated and you've let people down. And you've let yourself down, and all of that stores up and stores up and stores up. And I don't think people realize, but in their subconscious mind, they're like, "I don't deserve a six pack. I don't deserve strength. I don't deserve the perfect body. Well, it, so I'm not going to do the things that get me there." Because when when in reality how do you get one? Guys, it's not difficult. You go to a guy like him, he'll tell you exactly what to eat and he'll tell you exactly what to do. And some of you, depending on how far out you are, might require a longer program, but I guarantee you do the work, shut the fucking mouth and do the work. And six months later, you will be at what you fucking envisioned or dreamt of now let me ask so you that's this, how though. hard it is to get your bullshit dream so quit fucking acting like it's difficult that says well it's not that easy yes it is that it easy is. now is doing the work that easy not necessarily why because your mind will trick your ass and make you think it's you're, you're gonna die you're tired it'll start to rationalize dude every day i'm on that treadmill i'm thinking to myself like 20 minutes is pretty good actually <laughs> like right most people aren't even doing 20 minutes i don't yeah. know why i keep doing it for 45 maybe i'll do it for 20 today and then by the time it hits 20 i think to myself dude you're a bitch i love it and i, and I just keep going and i don't care anymore and someone said how long are you gonna do this i said it's a lifestyle from now on but only so i don't forget because i want to get your feedback on on my next plan i'm gonna get to single digit doing whatever restricting whatever doing whatever then because it's single digit, I can't have these, right? No, no, you won't. Yeah. So so single digit, I'm 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 looking good because I look pretty good now, but I'm looking fuck. Look at yeah. that guy. So that's great. But now, frame up restoration. I'm gonna say, how do I wanna live? Yep. Okay, so here's how I wanna live. I can go to the gym five days a week. I can work out five days a week. I can stay active six days a week. So yep. five days of working out six days of something mm -hmm. raising the heart rate yep and then one day off as far as what i eat i can eat pretty clean five days in a row with two days off easy 
And that's what I'm going to do. So when someone says, well, where are you going to, what are you going to do? I'm going to work out five or six days a week and eat great five or six days a week. And then one day I'm going to eat whatever the fuck I want and do whatever the fuck I want, period. And that's how I'm going to live the rest of my life. So if I end up 14% body fat because of that, well, that's what I'm going to be then. And that's where I'm happy. Cause, cause, cause I'll still get my discipline. I'll still get that I'm doing the work, but I'll also get a little bit of normalcy. You'll also be super healthy. And I mean, that'll carry over, but I want to go back. You know, you said six months, right? Somebody, they do the diet. They actually do what they're supposed to do. What if everything that they envisioned was going to happen when they're super lean or bigger or whatever outcome they try to create? What if that doesn't happen? And so the chick that's like, Why wouldn't it guys are, well, let's say the chick's like a guy that she's got her eyes on is like, he's going to like me more because I got real skinny. And he's like, I just don't fucking like you. He he don't care if you're skinny, fat, or other. He's just like, you're not my jam. No, but that's probably not the case. The case was she was fat. It might have been. Or or he's already fucking married. Who knows, right? So at the end of the day, if the outcomes don't align, then I I think that's just as much of a problem. I, I think that actually people being able to do the work is... Complete bullshit. And I'm actually shocked that I even have a fucking job because everything that you need to do nutritionally, it's on Google. Like I'm, I'm no like genius in this space. Honestly, like my whole claim to fame in the space was I figured out why people can't actually implement diets. And you know, our, the whole premise of ours was well, because a diet is not the answer. I could sit here today and be like, here's exactly what you need. You said it yourself. You got the plan. Sometimes you follow it. Sometimes you don't. Well, I, the, the real magic I'm going to do with you is like how in our work together can I get you to follow it as much as possible and tell me when you don't so that I can be looking at what's happening and what's changing, reading that feedback and make sure it's moving you forward. That's the real art of coaching. In my opinion, it has nothing to do with the plan itself because 99% of people are not going to follow a plan hundred yeah, percent. And most me, of the time people are going to get to this expected result. Like for me, when I was anorexic, I'm like, Pfft. I keep getting abs. Fucking chicks didn't like me more. Dudes didn't care about me more. I actually had no friends. I had no social life. I was the, I was sitting on the floor of my bedroom thinking about killing myself. I mean, that was the outcome that ended up happening. With abs. With abs. And so abs didn't do shit for me. Well, that's, I think, I think that's because you assumed they were going to do a lot more than they were actually going to do. Bingo. And so everybody assumes the journey is going to do more for them than it's going to be. And I think that, you know, if people put the whole, the result on a pedestal, and the whole journey is, you know, predicated on what they feel the result is going to do or going to change or going to feel like. True. And so the journey itself never feels good. It's never like what you think the result is going to be. And you and I both know we get to the end and it's not the end. It's a new beginning. It's something else, right? Whether it's business, whether it's nutrition, whether it's life, it doesn't fucking matter. You get to where you think you're going and you realize, all right, well, I'm like one, one, one millionth of the way there. And people don't like that. They want some sort of finality because they don't like the journey. They don't like what they have to do. And like you said, I'm going to make it a lifestyle. Well, that's why you're successful. You're not doing it to get to this destination, hinging the fact that your wife is going to like you more or your kids are going to like you more or your business is going to make 10 more million dollars. Even though that does happen. Those do happen. Those are byproducts. But that's not what you're hinging it on. And so 90% of people that are trying to change their life, they're doing it for a certain reason. And so a lot of people that are trying to make money, when they think money is going to buy them the house or the car, well, house and cars are fleeting. It's great. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love my car. I love my house. I love my watches, but that's not what affects my life, right? Having those things adds quality and it makes me work harder, but I didn't start the work to get those things. That just Why'd became part the of the journey. I had two choices when I was broke. I could either get a real job and work for somebody or I could do it my own way. And for me, it was always preserving freedom. I told myself as long as I could pay my bills and I didn't have to do what someone else told me to do every, every day, the rest of my life, I would be happier. And I chose happiness. <laughs> when I made my first million dollars, my mom said to me, she said, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> what the fuck's a real job, mom? I made more money. You made your whole life. And she said, you know, like with benefits and stuff. <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, I pay a hundred percent of benefits for my whole team. You know, I said, no employees do that. And so, but you know, that was their generation. I know, dude, I can't believe that there's people that think like that. And it's usually older folks. It was, it was my, my my wife's mother. She's a great girl, you know, best in-laws you could ever ask for. But she 
oddly cares about what everyone thinks so much. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't understand. I keep trying to tell her like, who cares? And she's like, what are you talking about? But like, that's those, those older generations. That's my mother too. You know, she's like, how do you, how do I tell people what you do? Well, my, my son changes a lot of lives. He makes people more money and you know, he's he supports the family. You know, I mean, well, why can't point, she say he, he runs his own coaching company? Uh, now, you know, she didn't know how to explain it in the very beginning, but you know, I was just cause you didn't have benefits as I didn't have benefits. But in the very beginning, I was one of the early nutrition, you know, one of the online coaches. So if she would have gone to her circle of friends, she lives in a retirement community in Hilton Head. She goes to her circle of friends says, well, he's an online coach. <laughs> like, what the fuck is that? You know? And they don't think that's a real job. They're like, couldn't he just work at Starbucks? They, they got benefits. And, uh, you know, so she, I, I don't know, I don't want to say she was ashamed, but I, you know, I lost my father this year back in March and probably um, maybe six weeks before he passed, he sent me a text and it was the first time in 20 years he told me he was proud of me. Mm. And I, I think there was some level of lack of understanding, some level of like resentment of like, you didn't have this traditional route. You didn't go get a job. You're not working quote unquote hard. I mean, he doesn't know how many hours I work, but you're not, you're not sacrificing for your family. And I mean, little, you know, little does he know, I mean, I, I paid off their house and I've taken care of my mom every day since. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things where again, he had an expectation of this outcome that his son would grow up and fulfill. And because I didn't for a long time, he struggled with the connection with me. And once he got past that and he saw the father that I am and, you know, the son that I became, the business person I became, he finally you know, uttered the words, I'm proud of you. And so I, I think that everybody has this journey that they're going on and everyone's doing it for a reason. But I think when the, when the reasons are in alignment, that's when shit actually makes sense. Like that's when people actually start creating achievement. And so when I started nutrition coaching, I charged a hundred bucks for like a month. It was nothing. And I actually, when I very first started, I didn't charge anybody. Uh, bodybuilding.com had this social media, uh, social media site called body space. And I had this job as a personal trainer in Hollywood and I'd go back to my apartment every night and there'd be like probably 50 messages of people asking me questions. I was just geeking out on the fact that I could talk to people across the world and giving them advice. I'm like, this is the coolest fucking thing in the world. And all of a sudden a month later, I'm like, I'm spending more time doing this than I am actually training people. I'm, I'm fucking poor. So I asked the next person, I'm like, well, I could help you, but you gotta give me like a hundred bucks for the month. And they were like, okay. And before I knew it, I had a $10,000 a month business. This is fucking great. Right. But I didn't do it to make $10,000. I didn't start online coaching to make $10,000. And actually every decision I've made in my business career since starting that was purely predicated on money is something I regret. I have very few regrets, but like I, I launched my first mentorship and one of my buddies was like, I did 50,000 this month. And I'm like, watch this. I'll do 50,000. I'm like, a $5,000 program, 10 spots. Let's go built this program real quick. I'm like, I could sell this. It's got a lot of value. I didn't know all the deliverables, but I'm like, it'll be great. Brought these 10 people in. I'm like, I did 50 grand this month too. The next year I fucking hated delivering that product because the outcome was not aligned with my journey. And ever since I've removed the emphasis of hitting a certain benchmark in the business, I've been far more successful. I mean, I've created more success than I ever dreamed possible. Living in a dream house, driving a dream car. What is your dream car? I'm driving a McLaren right now. That's a nice one. It's not bad. I'd say that qualifies as a dream car. It was a dream car for me. Uh, I got an F8. I, I prefer. I saw it on the way I, over here. I, I prefer the Ferrari over the McLarens, but Fair. I would say McLaren. I'm going still to Formula dream One car. tomorrow, so we'll see how it works out. Is that here? It's in Austin. I, I fly out tomorrow morning. The dude upstairs has three cars in that race. Does he? Oh, shit. I flew down to Nashville to go to a thing where, you know, he's got credentials like it's going out of style. Yeah. We got the paddock club passes, so I'm, I'm excited to see it. If it's good, I'm going to come to the one here next year. But you can see they're starting to set up for it and everything down on the strip. It's going to be good. But, you know, for me, it was never, even to this day, uh, I mean, candidly, I could tell you right now, we've had three buyout offers on my company. We're less than five years old. I've had three people try to buy me out for pretty good amounts of money. Why don't you do it? I'm not done yet. What are you trying to accomplish? I actually had to sit down and think about that recently. What is BTBW? Do the boring work. The shit no one wants to do. That's right. Do the boring work. Do the boring work. The shit D that's DTW same is what I say. Do the work. Do the work. But I'm going to tell you, do the boring work. 
And so it's the boring work to get people to quit. That's it. But in the digital space, it's, you know, it's knocking on 10,000 doors online. It's meeting 10,000 people online. It's helping 10 people, 10,000 people for free. It's putting value out into the world that you're not, it's, it's doing work that doesn't have immediate ROI tangibly. Long term, it has tons of ROI, but immediate tangible ROI, it's not there. It's like uh, building a personal brand. That's it. And so for me, that's actually, I mean, in my business career, that's where I'm transitioning to now. I'm really focusing on building the personal brand. Um, you know, my pursuit of golf is real. I'm excited about it. I actually see a lot of opportunity in the golf space. So opening up a couple companies on that side of the thing. And uh, the Live Tour that just launched, my goal is to buy a team. So they're doing a model just like the Formula One and uh, English Premier League. So you can buy a team. It'll be, you know, uh, transfer portals, relegation, things like that. So I'm excited about that. Golf's my passion. Got to 38 years old. Got a four-year-old daughter. Got a great girl. What are you shooting? Uh, I mean, par or under. So you're a kick-ass golfer. I mean, I'll, I'll take your money. So how does it, so so when do you get to become quote-unquote professional? When I decide to go all in and go to, so there's a couple ways you can do it. Um, on the PGA Tour, you can go to tour school. And uh, you, if you get through, you get to what's called the Corn Ferry Tour. That's their like But why wouldn't you tour. get through? Because there's a lot of really fucking good golfers, man. <laughs> there's Just because I can shoot under par doesn't mean a lot of people can't. And, uh, doesn't mean a lot of people can't, doesn't mean a lot of people can't do the same. So what, so there, what are, are there limitations? They just put on more. So when you go to, when you go to a tournament to, for instance, the, the US amateur, that's my goal. 23 getting into the USAM. There's probably 20, 30 local qualifying spots throughout the nation. Each, each site you'll get 90 guys that'll show up. But how do you qualify? You Only the, the top best? three get through top three and score top three and score. So you got to be top three out of 90. So what you're saying is even though you're under par, there's people way under par. There's, there's people way under par or just because I was shooting under par on average, I could shoot even par today. But they can't be that far under par because when you watch these golfers, they're, they're only 10 under and eight under and right. six under. But how many of them are 10 under and eight under and how many are one and two under? Bunch are one and two under. Right. So there's only two or three at 10 and eight. But the guys at one and two, they're fucking pro too. So you, would you say you're at one and two? It depends on the day. Sometimes it's one and two. Sometimes it's five and six. The you've, goal you've, is to always be shooting five and six. You've shot six under before? The My lowest 18 hole round is six under. That's pretty good. It's all right. Dude, that's what makes it fun. It's a lot of fun. Because when I go out golfing, I'll shoot like 95 plus. Yeah. But when I go golfing, number one, I never chase a ball. Fair. So Neither do if I. If it goes left, like, hey, they're, they're only a dollar. Um, I don't chase them. Everyone laughs at we that. got to get you playing more expensive golf balls. Well, they're pro V ones. What do okay, they cost? So those are like four dollars. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Same Fair. thing. Same thing. <laughs> Bottom line is, I don't chase them. I, if I crank one out into the bushes, it's a goner. Yep. I don't even look for it for one second. Good. You're the kind of golfer I like. Yeah. So, so, but when I crack one perfect down the fairway, that's what makes me want to keep golfing. Yeah. See, and I figured, like, if I were good, this would be fun. It'd be a lot of fun. It gets a little frustrating though when, like, you can't hit the ball so why, why do where you, play you want golf, the though? ball huh why do you play golf why do i yeah for fun for fun smoke cigars smoke have a cigars, couple drinks have a good time have a couple drinks drive, just chill. drive around a golf right. cart with my boys i'll take you out to southern we we'll do the the men's grill afterwards yeah right you gotta remember that so when you're out there and you hit a bunch of shit shots and i see guys that are throwing clubs and they're pissed off I don't i'm care. like you didn't you didn't come here to shoot 65 yeah you came here to smoke cigar have a drink have a good time yeah. so fucking do that and well, so when your expectation is the day is predicated on the number you shoot, it's not going to be a lot of fun. Well, do you think that would make you competitive? Maybe. So I watched a, I watched a thing on a 20 year old kid today that's made it to like the developmental tour, corn Ferry tour. He won every junior tournament by a mile. He won a junior tournament by 16 shots, which is unheard of. And all of a sudden he gets to the corn Ferry tour and everything is predicated on what's the number he shoots. Is he going to be the next tiger woods? And he's like, I've struggled more mentally in the last 18 months than I have my whole life. Because he forgot why he was playing golf. It was just to go out, to make the most of the experience. And all of a sudden, the whole outcome changed. And so he literally is judged at the end of every Sunday as to like what his placing was. And he's putting so much emphasis on that. If I'm advising him on the mental side, I'm saying, dude, so what? You finished 40th. 
There's 160 guys in the tournament at the start of the week. He finished 40th. It's pretty fucking good. Top 25%. This week is only one week in a collection of 20-something weeks that you'll play this year. And this year is a collection of probably 20-plus years that you'll play as a professional. Did this week really matter that much? And by the way, if you win this week and you make the you know million dollars, what happens? You, you don't play next week? You play again next week? Like, what actually happens? And he's thinking, like, oh, you know, I, I cash a million-dollar check. Cool. I mean, you know, like, I know the first time you see a million dollars in bank account, you're like, that's cool. And then you're like, fuck, nothing really changed. And so for him, he's attached all of this worth to this outcome. Same way fat people attach all of this worth to getting skinny. Same way broke people attach all of this outcome to getting paid. And it never lives up to the fulfillment they've created in their mind. And because it doesn't live up, that's when the destructive shit starts to set in. So what would you say to those people? <laughs> Do what you want to be doing. Like, you know, you gave the best example of somebody that's trying to, to change. You know, when if I was to say, here's why you should change, I'd say, listen to Bradley. Talk about why he's getting in shape. 100%. Probably the best accurate what articulation. Did I, what did I say? You said you want, it's the mental strength. You want to be stronger. You want to have a lifestyle ultimately, right? You want to basically, it's a restoration, right? For you, restoration framework for you. But it's, it's, you're changing yourself to prove to yourself you can do it. That's right. You go in the gym and you're like, I deserve this, right? You, you put that in a real. hundred percent. You said, I deserve this. And it's not the pain. Like you're not beating yourself down. I'm not a shithead. I don't deserve the pain. I deserve to go through this to become better. Except nobody thinks that they deserve to go through shit to become better. They're thinking, but they I want do. to be, yeah, they do, but they don't think about it that way. Nobody's thinking about the fucking journey. Nobody's thinking about what should or should not be happening in the journey. But listening to you a minute ago, you kind of like say, it's not going to be everything you think it's going to be. It's it not. makes you go, oh, well, why do I want it then? Bingo. But that's good because people need to figure out why do you want it? That's it. That's the game. In, in every aspect of life, we could sit here with fucking house moms. We could sit here with athletes. We could sit here with people trying to change physically, people in the business world. It doesn't matter. The richest people in the world will tell you at some point money loses utility. The most fit people in the world will tell you at some point a physique loses its utility. And if you're not embracing the process of it all, regardless of what you're trying to achieve, what the fuck are you doing? Well, that's true. At some point, you're going to be in a fucking grave with six feet of dirt above you. Well, just like everybody that's a else. Guarantee. That's a guarantee. And so what, like, what did it all amount to? That's because that's we, the outcome we're all headed to. Period. That's and, what, and what's funny is when people say, you know, so-and-so, you know, got diagnosed, he's going to die in three years. And everybody's sad for that guy. And I'm always thinking, we're all going to fucking die. That's it. Why aren't we all sad for each other? Like, dude, we're all going to die. That's it. Well, he's going to die in three years. You might die before that. You might die tomorrow. That's my point. So it's like, dude, why wouldn't you feel sorry for all of us if you feel sorry for someone that just got diagnosed with a terminal? And why Why are you actually sorry? Because he doesn't get to experience things? Well, it's sad. It's like, oh, poor guy's not going to be able to live. Right. But is he living? I don't Do you know. know what he's living? That's Do you a, know if he's happy living? But, but that's a deeper conversation. Right. And that's the thing we don't know. Let's keep it surface. But here's, here's the crazy thing that we're talking about the finality of it all. We're talking about the death of this dude. But we're all dying. That's but we're saying point. that the reason the finality matters is because now the journey is gone. Except this whole time, people are not talking about the journey. They're talking about the fucking finality. It's all fucked up. Well, do you, do you believe that there should be some sort of goal? I think we should all have goals. Absolutely. I mean, I, like I said, for me, I had to really figure out what do I want to be doing? Why am I, you said, why haven't I sold my business? Well, the real reason is there's, I need to make more money for me to buy a, a golf team. Probably going to cost me $200 million. I don't have $200 million yet. I will. I'll get there, but I still have work to do. And I also know earning that comes from a lot of other things. I also know I'm not done in the industry, but you keep in mind, you can also use this as a stepping stone. Absolutely. Sometimes, right. sometimes when you get a nice little chunk of change, now that is the reason you went big time. Yep. So like when home slice sold PayPal, yep. he, he went broke again, Did investing he? it into Tesla and SpaceX. Oh, yeah. So, so that might be your deal. Yeah. I mean, and it could happen. They're just not offering you enough. That's they haven't all. offered me enough that I could tell you. Well, it has to we're, be. We're still, good. You'd, you'd be we're like, still a good 20 million business. away from where I really want to be. 
Yeah, well, I've I've had a couple people come in here. This is one of my businesses, and uh, offer me forty four million. Yep. It was a while back, and I'm like, you know, thinking to myself, "What are you crazy? This place is going to be worth a billion someday." <laughs> and so I told them no. Didn't even entertain it. And you know, now that I'm a little older, I I, I thought back to myself like, "Shit, dude, maybe I should have took that." Now I don't know where I would have been because it's not like, well, it's not worth that now. It's grown and yep. it's going to grow, but still dude, $44 million lump sum yeah. handed to you. If you can't go turn that into something big, there's an issue. Amen. And so it's, I, you know, I've had conversations with Alex and Layla Hormozzi about this. They're, they're my mentors and good mentors, amazing people. I mean, my life changed drastically when they came into my life. I mean, I was successful, your, your but life they've taken did? me. Yeah, they've, I mean. I thought you said my let. No, oh, no, no. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> well, Ed spoke at Coaching Con last year. I know, but I mean, what's that got to do with uh, Ed, Alex, and Layla? No, but they. Uh, your life changed. No, life changed, man. Yeah, they've been amazing mentors. How did you of mine. meet them? Uh, I was the second acquisition.com portfolio company. And. Uh, How'd you hear about acquisition.com? I followed Alex for quite some time. And I Because of gym launch? I, yeah, because of gym launch. Um, I knew that our company and them would be good partners. And I said to Alex, I, you know, I sent him a message on Facebook one day and I said, Hey man, like you always talk about these things on your podcast, these private days. And you mentioned 50 grand. I said, where do I wire the money? And he's like, I don't do them anymore. And I was like, where do I wire a hundred grand? And he was like, I, I don't do it. And I was like, cool. He's like, I only do equity deals. And I said, name your number. And he's like, well, shit. He's like, I might have a conflict with your business. Give me like three weeks to figure it out. And he hit me back three weeks later and he said, all right, I can do it. And he said, and then he told me he was building acquisition and, and what it was going to become. And I, I said, send me the contract, man, let's do it. Yeah, dude. Well, that was a good partnership because they can only build and blow up businesses. Absolutely. I mean, it, I keep telling him, come run light speed, come run light. Speed. <laughs> I mean, it's ironically, everything I thought I would learn in that was, I thought I'd learn a lot about acquisition and marketing and sales because Alex is a genius when it comes to that. I don't think for the first year, first 14 months, we don't, we didn't even talk marketing or sales. What'd you talk about? Infrastructure, teams, uh, communication, leadership. And that alone, we grew 700% in 12 months just from that. And so, I mean, he's, he's amazing. Both of them. And I mean, Layla's equally as sharp. Yeah. Like I would, I'd probably speak with her actually more often. And, uh, you know, I, I think it just speaks to the notion of if you're trying to get somewhere, I don't think a lot of entrepreneurs are willing to invest a lot. I saw Cody Sanchez made a post yesterday and she's like, I'm not afraid to pay people anymore. And she even went as far as to say like giving away 45% equity in a business to bring in the right person to really compound the growth with speed. And as long as it's the right person, it's gotta be the right person. And so people are everything, but most people don't want to pay for people. So now we try to take the wrong person, underpay them or pay them, you know, fair for being the wrong person and expect them to be the right person with the right outcomes. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned. I mean, my payroll has significantly shot up, but doesn't scare me at all anymore. And I'm trying to pay people even more. I brought in a new creative director yesterday, promised him more money than I had ever thought possible for that position. What's the range of a amazing. creative director cost? Um, I mean, OTE, a little over two. OTE? What's that mean? On target earning. So base plus commission, he'll do a little over two. What kind of commission do they earn? He'll make a... Uh, of, of his comp, probably 100 will be uh, commission. Based on what, though? Base. Uh, so growth, um, market, hitting marketing, marketing metrics, lead generation metrics, hitting sales numbers. Does Alex teach all that shit? Um, he advises it. So he'll, he'll never tell me this is what you have to do, but he'll say this is what we've done at our companies. Here's what we think would work really well. Uh, what I love about them is he's like, dude, make your own decisions. And he's like, I, you know. I'm going to support it. I'm, if, if you're, if I really think you're wrong, I'm just going to fucking tell you, I think you're wrong. Um, but he's never been overly judgmental about it. He's let me make mistakes and he's never like, but they're big on metrics. They're huge on numbers. I've had to get my shit together real quick. Well, I want to get my shit here quick dude. <laughs> is this business coaching? Is that what you do? Show so, people how to get their metrics in place. Yeah. I mean the average, the average nutrition coach right now, is out there coaching people and it's super transactional. You know, you pay me $500 a month. I get 10 people to do that. I'm making 5k a month. You know, I get 20 people. I'm doing 10k a month, but it's like, great. Do you know your, was there an acquisition cost involved? Do you know the lifetime value of that customer? 
Um, do you understand what your overhead is? What are you paying yourself? What are your cash reserves? None of them know any of that. And so we figured out there's really three levels um, in the coaching space, in the service space, you know, coaching space. Zero to $10,000 is you're just working in your business. You're a solopreneur. You're an employee to yourself, but you don't have a business. You have a $10,000 a month job. You know, 10K to about 40, uh, like 45K a month, a little over half a million a year. That's really the business growth phase. As you're becoming a CEO, you're making your first hires, your admin, your- Is it top line revenue? Top line, yeah. You know, in the digital world, your setters, your closers, your assistant coaches, maybe you're dipping your toe into acquisition channels, so you're paying for paid ads, things like that. And then north of half a million, we really start, we really see the need to focus solely on removing that person uh, from the inner work, you know, from being a coach and the fulfillment and really getting them to the top of being a CEO and teaching them all the money things, all of the numbers. And, um, so we have three different programs to reflect that, you know, our zero to 10 K we can usually do it in less than 60 days. Um, you know, 10 to 50 with the right people, we can do it. in. I mean, we've done it in as little as 90 days. Um, you know, I'd say the average person is probably going to take a little less than a calendar year and then how far you want to go, which depends on who you are and what you're willing to do. You know, we take, uh, I always say, you know, attention plus a really good product equals a lot of cash. And, uh, Sam ovens put out a great video today talking about, you know, YouTube organic and how that's the future of everything. And if, if you're getting a shitload of organic attention and you've got closers and setters on the back end, you can effectively print money. You know, and they, their research says $10,000 and $30,000 offers are converting the highest. And 10, so 10,000 and 30,000, 10,000 with a 30 K ascension. And I mean, we're seeing something similar. Our offers are, you know, 10 and 30. We've got one that's a little higher than that. Um, and did, and so did Alex make, help you configure the, the stack? He did help us understand the value of ascensions and how to activate customers. So what you realize, every customer comes in in a customer journey, right? A lot of people are looking at selling their products and services transactionally. I made a sale, but they're not thinking about when the next sale happens and more importantly, how the next sale happens. So what in your service-based business triggers the conversation for another sale? I mean, you and I go out and we're, we're going out to a bar, right? We go out and 2.30 in the morning rolls around. The wife's like, hey, you got to be home at 3. But I'm like, yo, Brad, like it's, it's 2. Like this other bar across the street, like I heard it's fucking popping off. And you're like, it's like I got a 30-minute drive home. Like let's just shut it down. But if it's like midnight and we're just getting the party going and like we're already having fun and you're feeling good. And I'm like, hey, there's this place across the street. I heard it's popping off. You're like, let's, let's fucking go. We still got three hours in this. Like, let's go. Right. And so every service based business has that journey. There's a point where momentum is being achieved at a super high level. And when that momentum is at its highest, that's when you want to make the next sale. You want to have the conversation. You want to remind them the success you create together, but you also want to illuminate the fact that the journey's not over and the journey's still pretty significant. So if they want to go ahead and reinvest at that point and upsell and build more LTV for the business, um, those activation points become critical. And so Alex definitely uh, had a lot of influence on that for me. Well, he's got a book, $100 million offer. $100 million you, offers. You, is Great a, book. Is that a Bible to you? I mean, it is the way that I teach offer creation. I think that the value equation inside of that is probably the thing that every new entrepreneur should read and understand. That being said, I mean, you remember when it came out, I don't think a lot of digital entrepreneurs had guarantees in their offer. I mean, fuck, scroll Facebook now. Everyone's got a fucking guarantee. I'll double your results in 12 months or I'll, I'll give you double your money back, right? And so everyone's running the same thing. So I think, you know, Alex initially added insane amounts of value to the space. And now that value has almost become commoditized because it's reached so many people. And I think the same thing will happen. I think his next one's on leads, $100 million leads. So I think everybody will be running lead gen frameworks and then that'll get commoditized. And then I think he goes to sales. And I think you know, that one will have far less commodity because that'll just become a new standard. Um, but it's, uh, it's crazy how influential he's become in really like the last year and a half. When I, when I first met him, he wasn't what I would consider a, an influencer. You know, his follow, I think on YouTube, he had less than 2,000 subs when him and I met. And now he's got like two, 2 million maybe. Yeah, but like that was, how long have you known him? Uh, like two years. I was going to say, like, like I knew him when he started his YouTube channel. He didn't have any followers. None. I had more than him. Yeah. And then next thing you know, he's like at 400 and I'm still at 150. I'm like, God damn, dude. I tell him all the time, you know, he, no, well, number one, he's smart. Super smart. But he articulates yep. well. And more importantly, he's putting a lot of time in and thinking it through and building frameworks. So it's easily 
uh, understandable. Yep. So by the time it gets to the YouTube video or the or the social media clip, you know he's got it down. Bang, 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 and, so it, and it all makes a lot of sense. So how do you argue with it? You don't. Now you're like, I want more of this guy. Bam, YouTube, subscribe, because all the shit on his YouTube channel is good. So we could say he's teaching application, not just education. He's not just teaching you MBA-style business. He's teaching you this is the framework to go and do it in your own business. Yes. Ironically, that's how my business grew. And so, and and literally, so if someone hires you, it's, it's kind of like getting all the benefit of, of, of all the knowledge he gave you. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm no Alex Hormozzi yet. Uh, you know, I'll never be all the way to where he is, but I, I certainly have, there's a lot of influence, a lot of things I've learned. And, um, I think that our clients have definitely benefited from me learning from Alex. Well, dude, Alex is an impressive dude, but I love his podcast when he says, I don't have anything to sell you, yep. which dude, that is what you're selling. Them. That's it. The fact you're selling them, the fact you don't have anything to sell them. Bingo. So you're selling them. You're selling that I am the single source of value. And so whenever I want to put something out, you'll buy it from me. It's the whole attention plus a high quality product is money. And the whole acquisition thing. I mean, of course, dude, if, if he sees a business that is a good business, like they just don't know metrics and all this shit, yep. take a little piece of equity, fire up and empower the people using what he's already known to be working, blows up the business owners, happy. He's happy. He's doing the same thing over with the same value equation. Like who wouldn't give him a piece of company if their company went up 10 times? Worth? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what he does with all the other businesses and I, you know, I, I don't want to get too much into how they operate, but it's, you know, I, I don't know if he's, I don't think he's teaching everyone the same thing. I mean, I think he's really good at like customizing and, and doing all that. But I think that, the one thing you'll hear him say, and I've heard him say on other podcasts is, you know, he knows the digital space and, and he stays in the digital space and, and he's not going out there investing in like, you know, a fucking car wash or, or a storage unit or, you know, laundromat. And, you know, he, at least to my knowledge, maybe he's got fucking hundreds of them. I couldn't tell you, but he, what I heard him talk about, I heard it on Cody's Cody Sanchez's podcast. Um, he talked about how he really, you know, he realized that he can arbitrage those businesses, you know, get them and take equity and then build them higher, have a significant exit. And that's how he'll ultimately get to a billion dollars. And, uh, I don't know what a billion means to him. What I would love to hear in, in his world. I know he's always said, I, I believe I'll get to a billion dollars. I would love to him hear what his utility on a billion dollars is what because utility, well, like going back to what we talked about here, right. You know, looking at the journey as a destination, like why does that matter? I genuinely think Alex and Layla love what they do every single fucking day. Like I, I don't, I've never met two happier people every time I'm around them. And so they like what they do, but like, what does a billion mean? Cause I mean, at, at some point you can only spend so much money. So like, what does but a billion you, but you mean? Can give away a lot. Well, and they, they've said, right. I think that they did a, a YouTube post where they said, we're going to do a, we signed our will and it's a lot of it's being donated. So it will be, you know, it'll be given, it'll be donated to, to good causes. But like, what does that, what does that mean? Well, and then when he gets some there, to me right now, what's that? They should donate some to me. <laughs> to me too, man. But when they get there, I want to know, how does it feel? Does it feel like you thought it would feel? Because I think that that's in line with everything, you know, we talked about on this. So earlier we were talking and you said you have some sort of deal. You would throw the bomb squad. Yes, sir. So I said, well, what is it? And you said, it's like, we're 30 K 30 K. Okay, what's the deal? So we have eight courses in the nutrition education side. We have a level one cert, level two, uh, gut health, thyroid, male hormone, female hormone, mindset, and uh, like hormone certifications. So eight classes. We've also got our product called Coaching Mastery, which is guaranteed to get you to $10,000. And you have access to it for life. It's not one of these one-off coaching programs. So the value of that's actually a little higher than 30000 We're going to give somebody a full scholarship to the institute to the Nutritional Coaching Institute and Business Coaching Institute. And when they're done with that, you're showing them how to make money? Yeah, I mean, literally with zero nutrition coaching knowledge, if you're like, I want to go online, I want to do what Jason did or what you know, hundreds of thousands of other coaches do, make money online by helping people. I'm going to teach you the education that you need. I'm going to teach you how to help people. Then I'm going to teach you the business structure to get to $10,000 a month. And then if you if you want, on the tail end of that, you know, like I said, we have other programs we teach you how to get to a million dollars. Interesting. So how do they do that? Just DM you? Send me a DM and just use the word scholarship. How, scholarship? Okay. Yep. DM me the word scholarship. How about will, how about bomb squad? DM me the word bomb squad. Bomb squad, folks. DM him the word bomb squad so he knows you came from the show. That's it. And blow his ass up. And by the way, if you if I didn't say it already, it's at Jason Phillips is nutrition. 
That's and me. that sounds just like it's spelled P H I L L I P S Phillips. Dude, you, you're a, you're a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> I, I try to be, you're I'm local. learning though. You're I'm local. here to learn. You live right by here. Uh, I'm a member right by here. Well, we're going to have to have you back for a part two. Let's do it. I want to talk. I want to dive into the, to the business coaching. Let's do it. You know, that was, love to. that was how to make money being nutritional, but the business coaching, what are you teaching there? Everything from startup to scale. Yeah. Well, I got a lot of entrepreneurs, so let's have you back and let's talk only about that this time. Let's do it. I love right. it, man. Well, I appreciate you coming in. Man, I appreciate you having me out. Folks, hit up, hit up Jason in the DMs at Jason Phillips is nutrition. If you want a, a program absolutely free. Well, again, I don't know. How, how do you pick which one gets it? So it'll be randomized. So when they DM me, I'll send them a link and they'll enter me you know, name, email, phone number just to get entered in the drawing. We'll give this because this is live, I think, today. So we'll give everybody about 10 days to enter. We'll pick a winner in 10 days. Uh, you'll this be notified. Live. This ain't live. This is not live. Podcast will go live when? I don't know. So 10 days beyond when this goes live. Okay, good. We'll choose the winner. And uh, So you got 10 days, folks. 10 days from whenever you're hearing this. Um, and I'll here's what's you crazy, link. dude. You're we'll going to get, gonna get a, a, a flood of people. Here's the thing. I'll, I'll actually go one more. Um, we weren't going to do this because this isn't even on your sheet. If you win... I'll even give you a ticket to come see Brad because he's speaking at my event next year in April. Am I? You are. Where? Phoenix. I am? You are. Yeah, I didn't know that. Coaching con. I'll be down. Yes, sir. Well. So I'll give you a ticket to come out and speak. Yeah, I, and, and I can't I'll, guarantee you're going to meet him because he's a he's I can tight guy to get I to. I can guarantee you. If you if you do that and, and you are that winner, we'll hang. Dope. Go smoke a cigar or something. I love it, man. All the unhealthy shit. Folks, <laughs> as always, until next time, keep it real. <laughs> Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.